Welcome to this video. This will be a short video to uh, show um, a game that I recently came across and it was uh, simply too spectacular to to not show it. <laughs> okay, so let's um, go through the moves. It's a game played um, in, um, in November this year, about a month ago, in the World Youth Championships under under fourteen, so we have two, um, I think thirteen year olds playing here. A white player is um, from the Ukraine, Pavel Voronsov. Never heard of him, and I must admit that I never heard of the black player either, Caden Caden Trof, from uh, from the United States, who um, at the end uh, won this tournament even. So he's the new world champion under fourteen, and. Um, yeah, to get an idea, the white player is rated uh, 2,230 or 40, 20, 2,220, and uh, Trove is rated 2,312. But uh, you can be sure that um, a junior player coming from the Ukraine is, uh, is a talent. He's not, um, not a bad player. So let's see what happened. This was played uh, near the end of the tournament, and uh, both players were near the top of the field, so it was an important game. We have a Sicilian defense, and um, Voronsov here goes for this C3 line, which is um, a side line that it's uh, not too bad, it's quite interesting as an alternative uh, to the main lines. The idea is that after knight f6, the e4 pawn is not attacked at all, you can protect it if you want with moves like bishop d3, but um, it is not attacked due to this queen a4 trick. Voronsov played bishop e2 and now black cannot take the pawn because he loses uh, the knight. So bishop e2 and now black just continues to develop. There are alternatives. This knight c6 move in fact is a bit risky, maybe, <laughs> but um, it's uh, it's not clear if um, the black player fell into this uh, this line without any preparation or he willingly um, went into this, because now white can play uh, d4, and um, again offering uh, this e4 pawn. Um, yeah, this position black can take the pawn, but it's uh, very risky business. He didn't do it in the game, but I want to show briefly what happens on knight e4. d5, yeah, attacking the knight. And black cannot really move the knight, as then this queen a4 business would uh, be on again. So black must play this check. This is the only way to not lose uh, material instantly. The queen here um, yeah, controls the a4 square, so if white uh, yeah, now would um, move the, the king, for example, then black can really move the knight and there's no check on a4. So uh, knight c3, this is the real idea. Yeah, black takes, takes. Yeah, now you cannot take here because after bishop d2, both the queen and the knight are hanging. Black therefore plays uh, knight to e5. Knight takes here, queen takes with the check. Queen e5, castles. Yeah, and um, white has sacrificed a whole uh, bunch of pawns, two pawns, but he's got enormous compensation. And uh, in a practical game, black normally doesn't uh, manage to hold this kind of position. White has an enormous uh, plus score here. So this is a very risky line for black, which uh, Trove here avoided. He didn't uh, take on e4, he played d5, which is certainly um, yeah, a more, more solid choice, but um, cannot be really what black intended uh, with the, with this Sicilian setup to play d6, d5. Still it's playable, it's not a big deal. e5, knight e4, knight c3. Yeah, in this position he decided um, to um, get played um, in very simple fashion. I think it would be interesting to to try, um, yeah, moves like um, for a, for example, Bishop G4 in this position. 
of course it's tricky because of queen b3 but it would be more in the spirit of uh, this opening what he did is he took on c3 he takes c3 and um, e6 which is uh, yeah of course solid but um, it, uh, it looks a bit passive if you um, check this bishop on c8 it's not the most happy piece at the moment um, of course it's not so bad this piece um, has a future on a6 probably and in the game it's no problem at all as we see that uh, white played for c4 yeah black's idea is to play against the c3 pawn a possible idea would be something like let's say um, b6 knight a5 and then rook c8 at the end putting pressure here and maybe drop the knight to c4 so black plays on the queen side in fact in the game we see that white castled bishop e7 and now white played c4 so he uh, didn't really um, want to have a position with this c3 weakness he rather prefers to have um, a somewhat weak d4 pawn so um, this is the transformation now black took white uh, captured on c4 and now black uh, intends to play b6 we can see that after rook b1 which is a typical move in this kind of structure putting pressure on b7 and also intending maybe rook b3 at the later stage not in the next uh, one or two moves as uh, knight a5 would follow but it can be an idea to use the rook here on the half open file and maybe swing it over to the king side so b6 so intending to get the bishop on the long diagonal d5 yeah white um, plays it very directly i don't think this is a good move really but um it's uh, it's sharp <coughs> i'm sorry knight a5 the answer and now the bishop is hanging and um, of course he didn't overlook this it's um, the normal move knight a5 um he well, right player um, put his hopes into uh, onto this move d6. Yeah, this is interesting, but maybe um, ultimately not um, not so great. Let's see what happens. He took on d6. In fact, here um, Black also could take on c4, which is um, maybe the easier choice. If you look at this, Black has got an extra uh, pawn. The only uh, problem is that. He's got his, his two pieces in, in this diagonal. So queen d3 is a slight issue. If um, black now would move the bishop, then there's this um, bishop a3 move, and it's, um, it's a really strong diagonal. So um, it's, um, it's quite tricky. Black has uh, the move bishop a6, though, and I don't really see what white uh, can do to, uh, to take here to take any advantage of this this pin here this this pin i think black is simply fine but um it's hard to hard to play over the board to uh, to make this choice he took on d6 and then captured on c4 which is not uh, not bad really you can you can do it the other continuation was just uh, a bit simpler i think yeah now white went uh, rook before there may be possible improvements here but i don't want to spend um too much time on on, on each move here because it's really mostly about uh, one critical position bishop a6 protecting the knight and now attacking this bishop so we have a yeah mini repetition of moves um, but, but now black uh, took on d6, playing for for win, obviously. Black now has two extra pawns and uh, can easily, uh, for example, uh, sacrifice an exchange at some point to continue the game as two pawns um, are nice compensation. Yeah, here white um, played um, rook to e1, it was attacked. And black went bishop c6, <clears throat> using the bishop on the long diagonal. Yeah, in fact, if you if you would um, would check this position with the computer, it would simply tell you, okay, black is two pawns up and has no problems at all. This is the the computer evaluation. But if you look at the the position here in uh, on the board, and imagine that you would play this um, 
with black, then you, um, I don't know, maybe are getting a little bit scared. White has got um, a very good knight on e5. He's got ideas to swing uh, the rook over, getting into the attack. And the bishop on c1, okay, it's not uh, attacking anything at the moment, but it is always ready to sacrifice itself in case uh, h6 is played. White would sacrifice, or it can be used on the long diagonal, probably. So this is um, not so easy at all. You can easily get swindled in this position. The computer, of course, would win this easily with black, but um, it's not easy for a human. Okay, a trove played um, knight f5, which is in fact a very human move to overprotect h6 and use the knight for defensive purposes. And um, white now gets into position to play bishop g5 and put something on f6. We see this. <laughs> we see this soon. A5 attacking the rook, and it swung over to to f4. Probably intending to sacrifice itself at some point against this defending knight. Rook c8 and bishop a3. Rook e8, bishop b2 back. So this uh, this had a concrete idea. This bishop a3 to b2. Okay, so take a look at this position now. Black played rook to c2. Very natural, attacking uh, the bishop. And um, yeah, we're nearing the the absolutely critical position in the game, and uh, also the position where black um, needed to find a really outstanding move. Here, white played the yeah somewhat shocking move, bishop to f6. And now, I'm if you don't know the game, which uh, probably is the case for most of you, if you don't know the game then I strongly advise to um, to stop this video and um, take a look at this position. White has just attacked the queen with bishop f6. Of course, the bishop can be taken. And um, yeah, I advise you to take a look at this and, um, and calculate a bit various variations. So um, I'll be silent for a couple of seconds to give you the chance to to stop the video and I'll continue after that. Okay, I'm back now and will continue with the analysis. It's very uh, good, a good um, training for calculation skills to calculate this position. Um, and unless you're a really brilliant tactician, I guess you played a losing move now for black because in this position, black has exactly one move that wins the game, and this is the only move that does not lose. All other moves lose instantly. And the move that black played is, I don't show it, I first show the moves that lose. <laughs> okay, uh, let's start with some simple ones. Let's say queen c7, attacking the rook and intending rook c1. Then white can simply capture the knight on f5, as e takes f, rook takes e8 is checkmate. So after this, it's over. Black cannot take, and white has a very strong attack with the queen g5 coming, or knight h6 coming, all kinds of uh, attacks. Queen c8 is um, covering the rook, so that um, rook takes f5 is not, uh, not the best move, but white has a very strong uh, alternative, and this is knight to h6 which is uh, really strong and the move you can can easily um, easily overlook if black would take it with a knight then you've got queen to g5 and uh, you threaten mate now if black returns to cover it then you take and here black has no time to capture on f5 because of queen g7 mate he is uh, lost though g6 queen h6 is also mate And um, yeah, of course, this is also made next move, or maybe you can, yeah, it's made next move, really. Knight h6 is exceptionally strong. Um, if black takes uh, with the um, pawn, 
then uh, white uh, also wins with the move queen to g4 check. King here and rook takes f5 and black again loses. Queen g7 mate is threatened and um, there's no way to prevent it really or to avoid immediate loss. This you can you can try but um, this is again completely completely over. So white has really some some strong attacking potential. What would happen if uh, black would go to um, to h8? Then white um, can win with the capture and this one. This is one mate and this is another mate. So uh, a bunch of nice mating attacks. So you cannot move the queen obviously. So um, yeah, what what should black do? Okay, let's check um, if you take uh, the bishop simply. Then white would take on f5, strong move. He takes f, of course white was threatening um, knight f6, knight h6, all kinds of uh, attacks. Yeah, and here um, white can uh, simply take on e8, queen takes, knight takes check, king f8, queen h6 check, this is important because the queen now covers c1, so there's not rook c1 checkmate, black recaptures and um, yeah, white is winning here, you can play something like h4 and uh, you grab the h-pawn and run with the h-pawn, so white is quicker than <clears throat> black on the queen side, despite the fact that you've got a queen against uh, two pieces, but the h-pawn is uh, exceptionally strong. So if black um, cannot take the bishop and cannot move the queen, yeah, what what is he what is he supposed to play? In fact, as mentioned, there's only only one move, and this move was actually found by the black player, always keep in mind that he's 13 years old. He played uh, the stunning move rook to e2, leaving the queen en pre and uh, leaving the rook en pre. Yeah, so it also threatens checkmate, of course. So white um, doesn't really have a choice. He, he took the rook and then black played queen to c7. This is really the the amazing thing here that black can give up a rook just like that and then play this yeah this this calm move queen to c7 which attacks the rook and threatens checkmate so it's a double attack basically that white cannot cover he cannot both cover the rook on f4 and cover the the checkmate threat so it's it's really amazing white white simply has no move here and um it's not um, a mate or a direct attack from the white side, which only consists of checks. There are always um, yeah, silent moves there that don't involve a check. So, And all those moves simply lead to own checkmates. Let's say, just for example, this kind of idea was was a problem, but it's, it's simply checkmate in one move or two moves. White can interpose, but then it's made. For all those attacking ideas, white needs uh, one preparation move and this this is simply does not get as this rook is hanging and c1 is um, is threatened yeah white has no move something like this you take the rook and uh, also bishop b2 then this rook is uh, is gone and without this attacking rook on the fourth rank on f4 white's attack simply lacks punch and black uh, just emerges with these two extra pawns and uh, no no direct problems so this um this knockout <laughs> rookie 2 simply won the game but it's it's so incredibly difficult to foresee i would really like to know if he saw this in advance or he stumbled uh, onto this nevertheless it's great uh, that he, that he found the move it's simply outstanding um Okay, so <laughs> let's continue. 
White took, as mentioned, and uh, Queen to c7. Yeah, he tried uh, Rook f to e4, which um, covers the mate as Queen c1 now can be answered with Rook e1. Yeah, but Black can simply take. Yeah, and now White cannot recapture, as then there's uh, a mate again. So you simply got the Rook back and uh, in the process have um, exchanged the important attacking Rook. And White, um, yeah, simply ran out of steam here. He, of course, tried to, to fight. He played Queen to g5, which still uh, threatens the Knight to h6, so there's still some, some tricks to, to look at. But um, a black cold-blooded cold -blooded way played Rook c8, and uh, again threatened checkmate with the Queen uh, c1. So Knight h6, for example is simply answered by um, by King F8 and there's this nothing not even a, a, a sensible check or something and here basically yeah white is toast he has no moves he played bishop b2 to to cover the the mating square and now um a good really good move again <laughs> queen to d8 threatening yeah well or asking the white queen if you want wants uh, to exchange itself, but also threatening checkmate on d1. So um, white um, doesn't have a choice really. He gave this check to avoid uh, the queen the, the, uh, the queen exchange. King h8, rook d2, and um, this was the last try attacking the the queen. Yeah, if you want, you can. Um, Pause the video again and uh, have a quick look. What what should Black play here? Um, I'll be silent for about five seconds. Yeah, Black here can finish the game, and he he did with Queen takes f6. Yeah, mopping up in in style here. If White captures the Queen, then there's Rook c1 mate, the weak back rank. And uh, alternatively, queen takes. You simply, you simply take, and um, you have an extra piece at the end. So I think really this this rookie two move is one of the most spectacular moves I've seen in in a long time. Um, some grandmasters even said in uh, who were present in at the at this tournament that this rookie two move is one of the most spectacular moves. Um, that they that they know one of the spectac most spectacular moves of all time. Yeah, it's certainly certainly amazing to uh, put the rook on pre and then sort of uh, play um, a double attack on on the c1 square and the rook. This is really uh, really outstanding. Yeah, I think uh, one of the moves of the year, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you and if you really f found this move <laughs> when I paused the video and um, didn't um, get any help from from a computer or something, then uh, my congratulations to you. But uh, I must admit that when I saw the game, uh, it was presented on the ICC by Grandmaster Benjamin. Um, I didn't know the game, and when he when he showed this move, I was really almost falling off my chair. All right, so I hope you um, you enjoyed the video. I'll be back soon uh, with new with new videos. I'll play um, some tournament games over the weekend. Maybe there's some interesting content there. Yeah, till then, bye.